Hello, this is Ariel from Inconspicuous Bear, and I'll be narrating the Tin Man version of the Paragons of the Claxi Encounter in the Siege of Ogrimmar from a Guardian point of view. As a reminder, in keeping with the rest of my Heroic Mode videos, I won't be covering any abilities that are repeats from the Normal Mode encounter, even if they're like just higher damage or whatever. I'll only cover abilities that you have not yet encountered in Normal, i.e. things that only happen in Heroic, and how you as a Guardian tank should deal with them. Um, again, a lot of these will depend on how your raid approaches the encounter. You may or may not encounter some of these, or all of these, or what have you. Uh, it all depends on what your raid strategy is, and what the kill order is, and so on and so on. To start off the encounter, you will either be tanking Skier or Rickle. Now, the only, if you're tanking Skier, the only thing that's changed is that you'll probably end up dragging him off to the to one of the two doors, either the door leading to Garrosh or the door you entered into. Um, other than that, he's exactly the same as normal. If you're tanking Rickle, um, things are substantially different. Uh, than normal. Most normal mode strategies kill Rickle first because Skier's bloods are like totally trivial and easy to deal with. However, in Heroic, the blood, you basically just can't kill the bloods, which means you have to kill Skier first. Um, now, if you are tanking Rickle, this means that your raid members are going to get turned into scorpions. Now, the difference with the scorpion debuff, and this isn't this isn't something you specifically care about directly because you can't get turned into a scorpion as a tank. Um, however, um, your raid members will have to eat one of the parasites that you normally just don't encounter on normal um, in order to survive being turned into a scorpion. So, how you handle this if you are tanking Rickle is you let the first injection go through, i.e. you leave Savage Defense down until after the first injection happens. So you get the little, you know, the little needle injector debuff um, on your top right hand corner there. And then once you get the first stack of injection, you then make sure you have Savage Defense up for every subsequent injection until Rickel is dead. Now, if your DPS is like really, really slow, you may, it's theoretically possible that you might need another one. However, Normally at this gear level and with the little four upgrades and so on out, uh, you won't need, you should not need a second injection to spawn more parasites. You should only need one set of parasites in 10 man. Now, if you're doing some really weird, crazy strategy where you kill Rickle fourth, I know that's a thing, um, you will need two sets of parasites. However, if you're killing him, if you're killing him second, which is the normal strat for Heroic, um, you will only need one set of parasites, which means after the first injection, you will keep Savage Defense up. Now, one little caveat to this. If you screw up and get a second injection after the first set of parasites has spawned that you did not intend to get, so say uh, you got the first injection, you made sure it went off, you got the first set of parasites, and then somewhere down the line, say like the fourth or fifth injection, you forgot to have Savage Defense up and you got injection, you cannot have Savage Defense up for any, sub any subsequent injections until Rickle is dead, because you cannot spawn extra parasites, or it's probably 95% likely your rate will wipe. So make sure you keep that in mind when tanking Rickle. This also means that if you have the two-piece set bonus, which you probably will in 10-man because the four-piece bonus is really good for 10-man, um, you have to be ex either extremely careful about when you're using Barkskin if you do this thing where you screw up your injections and get a second one, um, or just you can't use Barkskin at all until, until Rickle is dead. Um, I usually fall off the ladder where I just don't use Barkskin, because I am really bad at planning ahead, planning timings ahead, so that Barkskin will not expire within four seconds of another injection. I just don't even bother with that. I'm just like, nope, not using, not using Barkskin at all. I'll just spam Friends of Region on myself and stay alive. So, again, that's another thing you have to keep in mind with tanking Rickle. Other thing to remember with Rickle is positioning. At the very start of the encounter, there will be a little bit of DPS put on Rickle so that the bloods that spawn from the first um, bloodletting, I think it's called, that Skier does, will go to Rickle instead of Skier. This is very important because, like I said before, you have to kill Skier first. So you have to make sure that that set of bloods goes to Rickle, which means you have to make sure that Rickle is nowhere near Skier. I think the range is 15 yards for the healing explosion from the bloods. So what I do is I keep Rickle in the center, Skier gets dragged away. Once the bloods are within like five yards or something, even even less than that, I leave Rickle there. Um, usually, actually, just during the first injection, um, I'll leave Rickle there so that the bloods pop on him, charge off to Skier, and start DPSing him. At that point, you basically should just go f full bore on Skier. Um, use I'll use uh, I use Incarnation 
Um, a th no, I don't have a second. I don't have a second potion. And he's incarnation nature's vigil at that point um, to get as much DPS on Skira as possible, so that we make sure we kill him before the second set of blood spawn. Now, if you do get a second set of bloods, what I like to do is then uh, take bash and make sure I charge one of the bloods and bash it, because A, it's a five seconds done, B, you can't miss, C, your DPS isn't really that great anyway compared to everyone else, um, and E, uh, you can also symbiosis a hunter if you have one in your group, you probably do because hunters are OP, um, and drop a frost trap on top of the blood after you bash it, um, and then second one to get a secondary stun on it to make sure it doesn't hit Skier before he dies. Once Skier dies, Karaz will, Karaz will come out, he's exactly the same as normal, so don't worry about anything there. Um, the next target, next kill target will be Rickle. Now, as a guardian, you will 100% of the time take Rickle's buff. I can guarantee you 100% of the time you will take it. So make sure that once Rickle dies, you click on that corpse to get the Scorpion buff, because it's like the most amazing raid cooldown ever, and I'll explain that later. So Rickle will die, Corvin will come down. He's basically, well, from your point of view, he's pretty much the same as normal. Uh, the only difference is you have to make sure he ambers Hissick before... Uh, like, you have to make sure Hissick reaches 50% before Corvin does, so he ambers Hissick instead of himself, uh, because you can't actually, you can't actually kill the amber, uh, which, okay, like from your perspective, that means absolutely nothing, because it's the DPS's problem to make sure that happens, so don't worry about that. Um, I, I like to use Berserk on Corvin, um, to make sure to get as much DPS on him as possible. Uh, also make sure to bark skin every time he does a shield bash, um, so that if you are taking damage, um, from... The dot, obviously, from the shield bash, and also from rapid fire, which is Hissick's spin around, shoot little points of blood. It's like Vizier 2.0, basically. Um, Hissick's rapid fire doesn't, it's not going to hurt you, because you're a bear, and you have ridiculous amounts of armor uh, and health. So rapid fire is, is like totally not a big deal. Um, but still, it's nice to have that damage reduction, and then just heal yourself up afterwards, taunt Corvin back, blah, 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 until he's dead. After Corvin's dead, Eocook will come down. You don't really care about Eocook. Um, he's kind of just kind of there and he does stuff, uh, but you don't really have to pay attention to anything that he's really doing. And then you'll kill Hissick. Now, at this point, always the same for Kalaxi will be dead. It'll always be Hissick, Corvin, Rickle, and Skier. The order in which you do those, I don't know, but it'll always be that those same four because that's the best way to do it. And at this point, Zara will come down. Now, Zarl has some new tricks, and they only matter if you don't kill him by the time he does one of those little catalyst thing, throw stuff around the room things. Now, he has three different kinds of catalysts. The first one is green. Note it combines yellow and blue, so if you have yellow or blue, you'll trigger green. Spawns a little green little pool ooze thingy on the ground that kind of floats around. Long story short, you have to soak it to make it go away, but just try and stay away from it. That's really all I have to say about that. The purple one will make you spin around in a circle and drop fire on you, except the fire won't actually hurt anyone until after purple is over. So you'll con be constantly moving moving forward, which means you have to be constantly strafing until a purple's over, in which case you immediately get out of the fire, because there's going to be a whole, bunch, whole pile of it on the ground, and then stay away from the fire for the rest of the fight. Orange drops expanding circles on the ground uh, under everyone that triggers it. You can't see your own circle, and it won't hurt you, but you can see everyone else's circles, so you have to try and stay away from them if at all possible. If it's if you're going to get hit by a whole bunch of them, like, pop a cooldown, so you make sure you stay through, stay alive through it. Now, you mentioned I mentioned before about Rickle's Scorpion buff. This is why you take it, to kill Zarl. Well, I mean, kill the rest of them too, but um, to make sure Zarl dies as soon as humanly possible. Um, because... The Scorpion buff inherits your Vengeance, which I probably mentioned in the normal mode video. Now, at this point in the expansion, you're probably rocking north of 80% crit, probably also using a Harms, uh, which also triggers in Scorpion form, um, and you may be using like a Cleave Trinket or a TTT or something. Um, so you're going to do absolutely ridiculous damage in Scorpion form. The thing is, when you have, you may have Karaz on you, and you may have Zarl on you at the same time, so you're going to be taking ridiculous damage because you're not going to have any Savage Defense up, um, so Zarl's dot's going to be stacking on you, um, and Karl's going to be mealing you in the face. So what I like to do for Scorpion specifically is uh, pop Mind of Ursoc and Survival Instincts and Nature's Vigil all right before I activate Scorpion, uh, the first time, the one when Zarl comes down, and then call for an external cooldown after, after Survival Instincts is gone. At that point, Zarl is probably going to be dead, 
um, because you're going to use heroism here too. If you don't remember the scorpion rotation, it's 3, 2, 4, 1. Make sure you press 1 instead of overlapping a 3 or a 4, which are the two dots, and that'll do ridiculous damage. Now, the reason you combine it with Nature's Vigil is because it's insane raid cooldown in 10 or 20, 25, it doesn't matter, and it'll completely negate an entire fire lines. Like, an entire fire lines, so your healers won't have to do anything. Um, but however, you're still going to be taking an absolute wrecking to the face, um, so you have to make sure that your healers are paying attention to keeping you alive uh, while you're in scorpion form, despite the fact you're doing incredible damage and ridiculous amounts of raid healing. After Zeril dies, Kastik will come down. He's exactly the same as normal, so nothing to worry about there. After Kastik dies, Killer will come down, and he has a new ability called Reeve, where he just kind of spins around in a circle for 9 seconds, tries to suck people in, and does AoE damage to everyone. Uh, but the closer you are to him, the more damage you take, kind of like Whirling Corruption from Garrosh. Um, yay. From your perspective, you really don't care, um, because it's physical damage, and who really cares about physical damage if you're a guardian? Um, so don't worry about that too much. The only thing you really need to be paying attention to is what which mob you're tanking at this point, and if you get aggro. Now, if you tanked Zarl when he came down, you you can't take Kilwark, which means you need to really need to pay attention to aggro uh, if you pop, if you pop Scorpion on Kilwark, because you will get one shot by a uh, his double stabby thing. But I forget what it's called, Mutilate, if you're tanking Kilrook after having previously tanked Zarl. So be very careful with that. Um, usually I just end up taking Karaz, and we kill him, and then I just kind of sit there and bumble about while Kilrook dies. For tanking items in this encounter, definitely want to go with a tanky metagem. There's a lot of really consist consistent damage no matter who you're tanking at any given point. Um, I like to use the tanking cloak because Disenrage is sort of tight. It's not that bad on 10 man, but on 25 it's actually really tight, so any extra DPS you can squeeze out, so it's really, really good. Um, for talents, tier 1, you can pretty much either go Feline Swiftness or Wild Charge. There's cases to be made for both of them. Um, so pick whichever one suits your playstyle best. Uh, tier 2, you Sarah's Gift, because the other two options suck. Tier 3, doesn't matter, none of them do anything. Tier 4, you could kind of go either way between Incarnation and Soul of the Forest. I like Incarnation for that initial burst on to uh, Skier, but that's my own personal opinion. You can kind of pick either one of those because they're all, they will all even out in the end, especially because it's hard to Incarnation uh, between Scorpion buffs because you're always holding Nature's Vigil for Scorpion, so the damage boost there isn't really as significant as it would be otherwise. Uh, tier, tier 5, go Bash, because you, you, you will use it for Skier's Bloods, and otherwise that's about it. Uh, tier 6, Nature's Vigil, Nature's Vigil, Nature's Vigil, because Scorpion plus Nature's Vigil is OP, like ridiculously OP, and the other two talents are garbage for this fight. In terms of Guardian-specific stuff you can do, the really big one is combining Scorpion and Nature's Vigil. It's like the most ridiculous thing probably in the entire tier. It's so OP. Um, other than that, holding Barkskin for shield bashes, doing things like charging and bashing a blood for Skier, um... That's really it? I mean, this only the real, you know, cool Guardian stuff you can do. I mean, Scorpion plus Nature's Vigil overshadows it pretty much everything. Um, but other than that, yeah, not really too much to write home about. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and good luck in the Siege of Ogrimmar. <laughs> if you die, no complaining if you weren't staying in the puddle. Reef. Puddle. No, oh, puddle's gone. Yeah, puddle. Good job.